Carlson on the lack of motivational or motivation, classical chess, new world championship formats, and life. There's an article written by Tarje Svensson from Norway, updated May 2nd, 2023. Here we go. Sunday marked the end of the era of GM Magnus Carlsen's reign as world champion after nine years, five months, and eight days. GM Ding Loren wrote history as the first ever FIDE world champion from China. There have been several FIDE women's world champions from China. Ding defeated GM Jan Nepomnishi 2.5 to 1.5 in a thrilling rapid playoff after the first 14 classical games ended in a drawn 7-7-7, and it ended in a 7-7 score. All right. In an appearance last week on the Norwegian chess podcast, Shock Schnack, run by his friend Askild Bryn and Odin Bikra Vea, Carlson shared his thoughts on the match, which was covered in chess.com's previous article on the podcast. Carlson said he could not discuss the GM Hans Neiman case, which is still ongoing, but he had plenty more to say during the session that lasted almost an hour. He answered questions in his native language about his motivation, his preference for chess or for speed chess over classical, his personal life, and his thoughts on the most promising young talents. Here's a tweet from Magnus Carlsen, time to learn Norwegian. Here we go. Classical chess and preparation. The former world chess champion was asked how his identity would change as he no longer holds the most prestigious title in chess. He says, I feel like that identity has already changed. I have mentally been out of the world championship for quite some time. There was a period after the match against Nepo that I was sh- that I was sure would be my last. The number one spot on the world rankings has been important for me for quite a few years, but now I feel like I just don't play much classical chess, so its significant cha- so its significance changes. Now this of course is also worth noting because again, the world of chess is changing. We have many more online rapid and blitz tournaments. We have many more, frankly, just rapid and blitz tournaments even over the board. So classical chess, there are still tournaments going on, but it's becoming less and less. I know that when I decide to play classical in the first place, I usually perform on a decent level, but I play so rarely that I've become a bit rusty, he said. Okay. Right now, I have no idea how good I am at classical chess. That will be exciting to test out again. Carlson has just two more classical events scheduled this year. Norway Chess from May 29th to June 9th, where he's scheduled to go head-to-head with Grandmaster and famous streamer Hikaru Nakamura and the Qatar Masters October 10th to 20th, where he gets a chance to defend his title from, from 2015. It also wouldn't be a big surprise if he plays for the Offer Spill Chess Club in the European Club Cup in the first week of October. But with just 15 classical games played so far, 2023 looks set to become one of Carlson's least active years, excluding rapid and blitz tournaments or blitz events. Okay. By the way, speaking of classical chess, I myself have very few classical games scheduled. I think as of right now, I'm scheduled to play in Norway chess, which is nine games. And um, that is all that I have scheduled in terms of classical chess for this year. So everybody is playing less and less classical. We're getting more and more rapid and blitz, which is definitely changing the landscape quite a bit. Um, Carlson, Carlson says that he has already started putting less priority on classical, giving some interesting insight as to why. Based on my experience in my last tournament in Vikonse, I feel like it's interesting on a purely intellectual level to play classical chess. It's nice to have time to think for a while and figure things out, but I'm quite fed up with all the preparation. It's frustrating to come up with new ideas every time in order to get a game at all. If, if it hadn't been for that, classical might have been my favorite out of all tournament chess. As it is now, it is just too frustrating. Okay, uh, so this is the first. this is the first very important point that we have to talk about, which is preparation. I actually 100% agree with Magnus Carlsen here. The problem with preparation is is the ideas are just to get to a playable position. It's actually not even about um, some, it's not even about winning the game. When we talk about the ideas, you're trying to surprise your opponent to where you can just get the game and then play chess, as opposed to a situation where like you're going to win the game. So I totally agree with Magnus here. I think it's a very big problem. Um, when when you look at this uh, objectively, because preparation is becoming a a huge issue. Now, the funny thing about this, however, is on the flip side, you have, of course, Ding Loren, who playing against Jan Nepomne, she basically just played random stuff, played the London opening, played the Kali system, and was able to win classical games of chess. So it is kind of funny to look at this contrast, because in a sense, Ding Ding is proving Magnus' point right here by by, by the way that he played in the World Championship match. Because he basically just tried to get a position and just play chess. And he was he was successful with it. Uh, but Magnus, I guess, feels that you can't generally do that. So it's, it's, it's interesting to note. Um, 
he added it used to be much easier but now it has become much more difficult because people have found more or less forced lines in most openings even in the London system you need a lot of preparation to play now it used to be a line I played in classical if I didn't want to prepare or if nothing else worked I thought I always had the London as a backup now you can't do that anymore now this of course is also very funny as a comment because obviously Ding played the London system against Nepo and Nepo was surprised now I said it I've said it a few times I said it earlier today I said it during the match as well that my feeling about the London system is that if if Nepo was preparing for match against Magnus Carlsen he would have had one of the very forcing lines that leads to something where all the moves are very forced and it leads to a draw with perfect play but of course in the match against Ding Nepo did not play like that he was willing to just play a position so there's another interesting standpoint that sort of validates what I said before um about how I, I like I was very surprised by Nepo's prep and the fact that Magnus has this view means that Magnus did not play London in his match against uh Nepo a few years back because he thought that Jan would have a very set forced line against it but at the end of the day we don't actually know because in the match here against Ding Jan did not have a very forcing line and he was willing to just play chess but let's keep going the gap down to world number two in opponent on the FIDE rankings remains as high as 59 points but Carlson admits he currently doesn't consider the position as important I will definitely try to remain number one with a decent margin but when I play so few events I don't feel it's as important it's not top of the mind most of the time okay here we go he talked about how he hasn't really been motivated to play classical chess since 2019 when he scored some of the best results of his career and won every tournament he took part in I feel some preparation for my match in 2018 that worked very well but none of that stuff is relevant anymore because people mostly play other variations that are much more forcing and nothing can be done everything that helped me back then is more or less useless now I think it's going to be more difficult so this is where I'm going to create a board I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a, a perfect example of that so let me let me open an analysis board on chess.com and I'll give you a perfect example okay so this is going to be a very advanced advanced uh advanced lesson I'm gonna give you guys this will be very quick but one example of this is very specifically what Magnus played against Nepo which we have the um we had the uh we had the Catalan or the separatist opening played here by Magnus against Jan Nepomuch in the world championship match so we have this Catalan and there are many lines here that you can play one example here is a black and take and after Queen to c2 is played in this mission the main line that's been played a lot is line with a6 a4 Bishop d7 Queen c4 Bishop c6 and in this position it's considered equal but there are many ways why you can play Bishop f4 Queen c2 I think even rookie one might be a move here uh Bishop g5 obviously a move all the pieces on the board very interesting position many lines very rich but in the match what Nepo played here is he played this move b5 here and after a4 Bishop b7 in this position this leads to a very forced situation where after Queen takes c4 and Bishop d5 more often than not you get some version of a line like let's just say let's just say this to to illustrate the point more often than not you get a forced situation where you get something like this takes takes Queen c1 takes 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 Bishop f6 Rook d1 and something something along these lines now again this position here white has an extra pawn on the board but what you'll notice is it's very limited material white has five pawns here and black has four pawns and with perfect play this is a very easy draw here for black so even though white gets an extra pawn this, these lines are extremely forcing and all the pieces come off the board and so what Magnus is saying that now there are these lines that are extremely forcing where you get straight into end game and it's very hard to do anything differently to create play there are very few variations it's generally about looking for one little move here or there to create complications um so that's what Magnus is referring to when he says players play forcing lines instead of just playing chess like this whole line with this whole line with a4 a6 and bishop c6 I mean it is equal with perfect play but again all the pieces stay on the board all of the bishops and the knights stay on the board the rooks and the queens stay on the board and there's a lot of play but when there are lines that are very forcing where it goes straight into an end game like this it's very very hard to do anything because even though white gets an extra pawn here all the pieces are off the board and if you play this correctly it's going to be a draw so it's just pure theory pure theory leading straight to an end game where if you if you don't make a mistake you will draw this every single time so you're saying chess to solve not exactly but the, this is exactly what mag is referring to is an end game like this where it's just straight forth boom 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 straight into the end game limited material on the board all right back to the article we go let's let's go back to the article um and let, here here we here we go um so and, and also about 2019 as well since I saw Magus play in 2019 Magus was playing amazing chess he played the grand Ch chess tour event in Zagreb uh Croatia he won that tournament he was on fire in 2019 just playing amazing amazing chess okay um so here we go 
Carlson has dominated the world of chess for more than a decade, having won 15 world championship titles and more super tournaments than any other player in history. Game six in Dubai. The breakthrough in his 2021 World Championship match against Nipomnishi came in the sixth game, which became the longest in the history of FIDE World Championship matches, lasting 136 moves and almost eight hours of play. Okay, I remember that I didn't feel particularly well physically. I felt that I lacked energy, especially after the sixth game that lasted so long. Carlson says winning that game made him completely sure about winning the match. I think he suffered even more. The game in itself is worth a book. So many strange things happened. What I am most pleased about is that I remained calm the last hour and a half when I didn't have much time, and it helped that there wasn't much risk for me then. I stayed calm, looked for chances, and didn't panic at any point. After the game, there was a lot of adrenaline, and I thought, sure, I could play more. I got tired eventually, but this is how I feel that matches should go, that it should be even, it should be even and difficult to break through. I think the football analogy is actually quite good. It's easier in football to defend or to park the bus. You don't succeed every time at all, but it's clearly the easiest. You don't need even you don't need even close to the same set of skills to park the bus than to try to break down your opponent. It's the same here, to try to be destructive rather than to try to create chances. So Mag is saying again, it's easier to park the bus and be rock solid and not lose rather than take chances to try and score a goal or win the game of chess. But if either one of these team, if either one of the teams takes the lead, you see that a match that is even is no longer even. If he is, if he had taken the lead, he would still have had a really good chance to win. But it would have been something completely different. If I take the lead, I'll probably win. But if he takes the lead, it's not clear who wins anymore. I think that's the biggest difference. And of course, I completely agree with Magnus here. We saw it in his match against Karyak, and when he lost, he really had to ratchet it up the next game and bring his all to try and win and even the match. Whereas if Magnus gets that first win, you know it's going to be absolutely brutal. So, okay, motivation. He also talked about how his motivation changed and about giving up on the impossible 2,900 rating target, his ambitious goal announced along with the abdication of his title. I feel like my motivation goes up and down, and I'm actually playing mostly for fun. I don't have any big ambitions that I want to achieve. I have given up a bit on trying to reach 2,900. It will just be very, very difficult. I want to enjoy playing chess, but how seriously I will take each tournament will differ. Sometimes I think it doesn't matter, Matt matter much. Carlson's last tournament was a chessable Masters where he was eliminated by Nakamura. Now, of course, we have to watch this because it features yours truly. Does it? What? I mean, you can't trade queens. The black king would be too close. King e7. Yeah. I mean, d8. On the move, right? <laughs> 19 seconds. He's going to flag him. Any safe square for black. Perpetual coming. Oh, my God. Oh, queen c2 check. So you have a counter oh. check if black checks in the second right. So he's checking in diagonals. Wow. King b1. Got to move. Oh, no more, no more checks. checks. Oh, and... What's happened there? What happened? We see a reaction. Magnus is oh, 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 no! Oh, my God! Did he free move? He mouth slipped. Oh, and Hikaru there! Celebrating! Magnus mouth slipped, blundering into that queen. What an end! And Hikaru Nakamura takes this match. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Wow. What a finish. We didn't wow. expect that. We thought it might be on, decided on the board, decided on the clock, but not with a mouse slip. And uh, Magnus. Yeah, so there you guys go. That is, of course, the last turn that Magnus Carlson played in. And of course, that's me with my I literally don't care shirt. Exactly. Anyway, let's keep going with the article. Here we, here we go. He said, the last turn I played, I was in France, and I, was, I enjoyed spending time with my family and being in the hills, but I thought I wouldn't sacrifice time with my family to try to be as well prepared as possible. I would just show up and try to do as well as I could, but that was it. In other turns, I, I may feel like I really want to try to win. That's how it's been for a few years. It tends to change. It's not necessarily in the bigger, biggest tournaments that my motivation is the highest, but that's fine. Normally, I still think it's really fun to play chess, especially when it's more casual, but for tournaments, it's more up and down. Okay, new world championship formats. When the Norwegian Grandmaster announced the abdication of his title, he expressed his displeasure with the format of the world championship cycle, a never-ending debate in the chess world. Carlson was asked whether a different format would have changed his decision. It's clear that the motivation depends on what you think is interesting or not. I have never favored the current format with matches in classical chess, especially such a short match. I was positive when they increased the number 
from 12 to 14 games and makes it less random and also that they reduce the number of rest days now they have increased it again no idea why they did that I guess to give them more rest but it also gives teams more time to work and fill in the gaps so that makes it even harder to prove that you are any better okay now of course I I think that he's right about the rest day part that when you have more rest days that's more chances for the players to prepare better and in general just it becomes harder to win games draws become more likely um I have never been a fan of the world championship and I've said in part publicly but also privately both before and after every match that I don't know whether I will play this time or the next I felt that I played because others expected me to rather than wanting to do it myself. I was motivated in 2013 for the first time in order to test myself in the Canada's tournament, but that was more because of the thought of trying to become world champion once. It was fun, but it was not like I wanted to keep the title. Now, this is the first thing that I see here from Magus where I'm not like, I'm not saying that I absolutely agree. This sounds a little bit suspicious. This sounds a little bit sus to me hearing the thing about, it's not like I want to keep the title. I don't believe that. I think that probably somewhere around Maybe like the third, I feel like somewhere around the match against Fabiano is when the classic phrase, heavy li- what's it? Heavy lies the crown um, that sits on the person's head or something like that. I, I don't believe this. I think this is actually a little bit, um, this is not completely true. I think it was somewhere around the third or fourth match once maybe Karyakin or against Fabiano where he started, where he did not enjoy it. He did not actually enjoy the match, did not enjoy the format or those sorts of things. But prior to that, I think he absolutely was loving it. Um... So I, I think it's a little bit, I, I think it's a little bit, a little bit questionable. I think it was either the Karyakin match or the match against Fabiano, one of those two matches when he became a little bit disenchanted with everything. Okay. He also revealed the story behind his celebration after his victory in the 2014 World Championship match against GM Vishwanathan Anand in Sochi. Okay. It says, I had a post on social media back in 2014 with two down, five to go, but that was intended just to troll people a bit. Carlson has a few ideas on which formats would increase the chances of him returning to the cycle. The most obvious is one FIDE also suggested, to have two games per day with a shorter time control. You'll get more games and a shorter time control, which means the importance of preparation is reduced and you'll get more decisive games. Interesting. So what Magus wants, he wants, he wants something like you play two games a day. You play something like game 45 or game 60. Actually, he says it right below. He says he suggests a time control of 60 minutes or 45 minutes with 15 second increment added per move. He also likes the format used in the champion's chess tour with four game matches. Um, so I think first things first, I actually, I, I think it's reasonable uh, to reduce the, reduce the preparation factor. If the players have to play two games a day, like 45 minutes, I think that's fantastic. I think that does make it where you play for not more than maybe three or four hours in total. Um, and I, I think again, the preparation gets minimized to a certain degree. So maybe, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. I'm pretty, I'm pretty skeptical that it's going to happen, honestly, just simply because of the fact that FIDE is so resistant to making changes. Um, so if it happens, it'll probably have to happen separate of, of FIDE. So that that I think is important to note um, when, when you look uh, when, when you look at, at the time control. I mean, who knows what, whether that will happen or won't happen. But I, I but I, but the problem or not problem, but the conundrum obviously is that if Magus is in a classical match, it's not going to be super exciting the way this match was. But if he's not in this match, you're going to see blunders like we did in the Ding Nepo match that actually make it very entertaining. So it's a very tricky. It's like kind of a conundrum. It's it's a serious conundrum because when you have two players who are not Magus, you can have a lot of decisive games and it'll be exciting. If Magus is playing, it's going to be nothing like that. So, it's it's just a conundrum. It's it's a serious conundrum in general as far as as far as the situation right now. All right. Um, when asked whether we could see him playing in the Canada's again, Carlson said, with the current format, the chances are very slim. If the format changes, maybe, but the chance of me playing in the next Canada's tournament is less than 1%. Okay, so first things first. If we take Magus at his word based off of what he said in regards to the World Championship match, match for many months before the Canada's tournament, this means Magus has no intention of playing in the current format, period. He does not intend to play the candidates, nor does he intend to try to become the FIDE World Chess Champion again. Uh, if we take him at his word now maybe this will change but i'm very i think it's very uh, it would be very odd for magus to say this and then suddenly change his mind so um i think that magus is not going to play i think we take him at his word he's not going to play and that's that's that he will not play the next match and we'll see what exactly that leads to do we lead to a situation where there's a new like world championship match new organization organization that comes around that creates something who knows but if this is legitimate and what he's saying is, is to be believed. I think this means that probably we're going to end up with some other format. We're going to end up with maybe like 
other organizations creating events and mag is trying to become the world champion separately so i think there's a very good chance here that we're going to have another situation like in the gary kasparov days where you have another another world champion you probably have magus being the world champion of a different format different organization whatever you want to call it but i think very good chance will i play in the candidates now it's a good question this will definitely be a video up on youtube so big shout to everyone watching on youtube make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already um back on topic however when i'm asked about whether i will play in the candidates tournament Based on the events of the last couple of days and sort of the way FIDE has been acting towards me, I would say that right now, um, the chances of me trying to even qualify for the candidates tournament are extremely low, extremely low. Um, and, and so I would say there's very, very high chance that I will not even attempt to play and qualify for the candidates. So that's my little bit on the topic. Moving forward, here we go. We have Magus accuses FIDE of leaks. Carlson describes the... Carlson described the discussion that took place with President of FIDE Arkady Dvorkovic and its CEO Emil Satovsky during the Candidates Tournament in 2022. There was a meeting in Madrid with some people in the FIDE leadership. They wanted to discuss new formats, but nothing more came out of it. Partly because they leaked things from the meeting that I wasn't happy with. In addition, it was wrong info. Now, this is a fairly serious, um, fairly serious accusation by Magnus here. He's saying that FIDE was leaking things. Um, that is actually very interesting that the FIDE was apparently leaking things that was wrong info. Now, I can give you a very specific example of one thing that I suspect that Magus was uh, Magus was upset about, which is I even heard this rumor that Magus, when he was talking to FIDE, he wanted them to change it to where it was like a match format. So something like you play a match, match of four games and the winner of that match gets like a point, kind of like tennis and so forth and so forth. Now, this is one example of something I heard directly, which I suspect was a leak. Uh, nobody knows nobody knows for sure except Magus obviously he, he could confirm that or deny that either way but that was one of the things I heard was that he very strongly wanted a format where it was like tens where you play four games and if you win you you basically win the set and it's like a best of three sets best of three sets of four games each so this is one thing that I heard um directly and may, maybe it's right maybe it's wrong Magus obviously can confirm whether this was part of it but this was one thing I heard um so the only thing I did was to postpone my decision there were but there were no discussions they presented some other formats which could have been interesting but there was no real dialogue carlson did not elib carlson did not elaborate on what he considers a leak fide's chief of press david yada confirms to chess.com that dvorkovich and satovsky were present in the meeting but denies any claims of leaks the info that was shared from fide was transparently conveyed by emil satovsky when he made an appearance as a guest on the official broadcast of the candidates he said i can confirm there were no other comments on this topic from fide officers to members of the media so again when we hear about no leaks, I, I'm just going to say, based on a plethora of topics in the world of chess, uh, I, I, I think this is this is probably not accurate. This is probably not accurate. Now, once again, in the spirit of everybody like saying things and, and threats and all these other things that are going on in this modern world, um, I will say that this is my opinion, just to be very clear. Um, among among all formats, Carlson says he's like says he's liked playing Blitz the most, even though he's experiment experimented with 30 second bullet which he quit playing pretty quickly. Yeah, 30 seconds, which is hypermedia is definitely, or hypermedia is, uh, is hyperbole is definitely very, very difficult. Um, in regards to more traditional formats, the, the ones you play professionally and in less casual settings, I feel like rapid is the most difficult. I won't say I like it the least, but it's the most challenging as it's difficult hybrid between classical and blitz. And I agree with this statement too. From, from Magnus' standpoint, when you play in a tournament like the World Blitz Championship, um, you feel like you're playing sports. Like it, it feels very much more like a sporting, sporting atmosphere and environment because people are winning. Like when I was playing in the, um, when I was playing in the uh, in the World Blitz in in Kazakhstan, I remember like every round when I win a game, I looked to see if Magus won his game. Like towards the end of the tournament, it becomes very much like sport where you're trying to win, see if the other player is winning. It becomes a sort of horse race to the finish line, and so it feels very much like a sporting atmosphere and environment. So I, I agree with Magus here. Um, in terms of blitz why he likes it, it's because it feels more like a sport than anything else because of fast-paced action and just the the horse race to the finish line um i also agree with him about about rapid because it is very tricky between like moving too fast and where to use your time and you get that hybrid in between the two okay let's keep going impressed by prodigies the 32 year old also used some time to talk about a few of the world's most promising talents which he eagerly follows one of them is gm gukesh d who at 16 years old is already ranked number 18 in the world. Magus Carlson drew Gukesh. I analyzed a bit with Gukesh after 
or let me just, yeah I analyze a bit with Gukesh after playing against him which is not something I usually do you exchange a few words but it ha hasn't been common for some time but he asked me there are also a couple of other players with whom I analyze games in the Netherlands I wouldn't normally suggest it but if the young guys want to have a look I feel like maybe I could learn something they could learn something so it could be nice it was impressive to see how he calculated variations compared to myself it was like that line was impressive I hadn't seen that at all I experienced that with Pragnanta as well there's a lot I don't see Carlson is particularly impressed by the 2021 world rapid chess champion 18 year old GM Norbeck Abdusatora from Uzbekistan currently the world number 17. also Norbeck and Gukash by far and away the two most promising juniors no surprise to hear that from Magnus either all right it's not clear which one of these will actually break through and become one of the greats I don't know if Abdus Torov is the most talented among them I actually think not but he is definitely the one with the most sportive qualities it's extremely impressive both his concentration and discipline he's also someone who takes his chances he tends to end up in somewhat difficult positions but you can be sure he will defend very well I've heard people staying in the same hotel as him and he's apparently a machine on the treadmill and with weights he's a true sports athlete who has huge potential then you have Gucci Reza Ferruja who likes to do other things as well but he's the biggest talent among them all okay yeah future the 32 year old became an uncle for the first time two and a half years ago when his sister Ellen gave birth to her second child last December he says he would love to have a family of his own in the future I don't feel any pressure but it's definitely something I want if if not right now at some point I think it's incredibly nice I think it's incredibly nice to be an uncle and also have friends who become parents to score some adult points pretty much okay and for Hollywood and, and the Hollywood star he was hanging out with the two-time Academy Award nominee Edward Norton okay here we go um I have been on vacation with him and hung out with him and his family he is a nice guy he invited me for movie night every evening where he chose the movies it was interesting on Monday Carlson jumped on a plane to join the European poker tour in Monaco where he is playing in the main event that comes just two weeks after he played in the celebrity poker event in Los Angeles for now Carlson's chess fans won't have to worry that he's serious about the game it annoys me a bit when people ask me whether I'm serious with poker no I've never done that I've always liked playing poker and never been particularly good or had ambitions in it Th that hasn't changed at all yeah and once again obviously not surprised to hear this too as anybody who can read between the lines knows Magnus is not out there memorizing tables and trying to improve his poker game he's just playing for the rush for the fun of it and whatever happens happens also as Magnus is playing in the EPT which is a multi multi-table tournament your your win and loss is pretty much capped so it's not like you can go there with like 25 grand or 50 grand and lose all of it and then lose more on top of it um Carlson will next be in action at the chessboard in the Superbet Warsaw Rapid and Blitz starting May 21st until May 25th that event should excite chess fans as it will be the first meeting with a new world champion ding all right so pretty good article um I, I think the general takeaway here is that Magus is not going to play in the candidates he will not play in this uh he will not play um he will not play in the candidates he will not try to become the world champion if the format stays the same if something changes maybe he will play but realistically I think it's very clear that Magus as, as it stands right now if there are no changes to candidates and world championship he will not play I think it's very clear that we take him at his word and he's being honest based on what he said in the past can we expect the format change at some point my personal opinion is no um my personal opinion is no and the reason that my opinion is no is that I think Fide is going to be under the under the the wrong assumption that because this match was so exciting due to all the decisive games and the high viewership and the hype centered around the mistakes they're going to think that they can survive going forward with things staying the same and this is actually sort of a validation that they don't need Magnus so I think Fide is actually not going to change anything whatsoever and I think that just looking forward I think you're going to actually end up probably with a separate format and you're going to have competing you're going to have Fide competing against I don't know chess.com or maybe like wealthy individuals who put together a tour or something along those lines but I think there's a very high chance that you're going to have two separate world champions again I think it's, it's there's a very very good chance of that um objectively I don't think he's going to play I think we're going to have two separate world champions that that's that's what I expect to happen here because again just hearing what Satovsky has, has been been saying publicly on Twitter and other places and then seeing like Dvorkovich's interview I think it's very clear they think this match was a massive success and they don't need Magus to succeed 
Um, so I think it's very clear that we're that Fide will not change their stance. Magnus is, of course, not going to change his stance. And I think we're going to have a separate, we're going to have something separate happening. Who knows what that's going to be? But I think something separate will happen in the future. So that's my general take of uh, the biggest takeaway from, from this article that we cover. Um, and I think it's also worth knowing that, of course, he looks at Noterbeck, he looks at Noterbeck, Gukesh, and and Gucci Reza as the three most talented juniors um, in, the, in the near future. So good article. I really like it. Um, but anyway, on that note, let's move back to chess.